Let's talk about Java constructors, what the best practices are for writing your constructors, and some of the quirks and features of Java constructors. So we have Java constructors. One of the things about Java constructors is that they're not actually required for you to write in your class definitions. So we have a constructor, but Java has default constructors. Default constructors. But only if you don't write your own. So you have to leave constructors blank. You don't write any constructors in order for Java to use its defaults, if you don't write one. So what does the default constructor do? It does a few things. It sets some of our variables to default values. So ints uh, become zero, doubles, that's a u there, D-O-U, doubles, become 0, 0.0. Booleans are false. And all objects are null. So this is what Java automatically does if you don't define a constructor for your class. Now, as soon as you define a constructor, your constructor takes precedence, and Java no longer does this for you. So our constructors, just as methods, we can have overloaded constructors. So we can call multiple levels of constructors. So let's see how we would do something like that. Let's say that I have a class, and uh, let's go ahead and call this class book. So I have my class book here, and I'm going to write some constructors for this book. So the first constructor I'm going to write is my public book. And maybe I want a few parameters. Let's go ahead and assume that I'm defining the fields and all of the things that I need up here, and all of the mutators and accessors, all of those are defined. So we have a public book here, and I'll go ahead and... Uh, Assume fields and methods. In the linked replit below, I will have all of this set up for you, but for the notes, we're going to keep it short. So I have my public book, and I'm going to pass in uh, as parameters. I'm going to take an integer as the year published. And I'll take in an integer, a let's say, let's say a string for author. String for author. And let's uh, take in one more integer for uh, number of pages. Num pages. And we could have more information in our book, but this is our initial constructor. So in my initial constructor, it is good practice to use our mutator methods to change and set the data for these different parameters that I'm passing in. And the reason for this is that I may have something in my mutators that controls some of the data. So perhaps I have in my mutator something that checks the year and sees if it's a book that has been published in the last couple hundred years. Or maybe it will do something special if it's a really old book or if it's a book uh, that is accidentally published in a future year, right? We don't want something that's published in the year 3000. That would be impossible. So we might have something that checks that. So we're going to use our mutator methods. So we might say uh, set year. E A R, and we'll pass in year, and we'll say set author, 
and we'll pass in author. And we'll say set pages. And we'll pass in pages. And again, in this case, I am assuming that I have all of these mutators properly set up and I'm passing in the correct parameters for each of these methods within my constructor. Okay, so this is my uh, initial constructor that takes in the parameters. Now, what if I want to create a book, but I don't know this information? Well, now that I've written a constructor, I won't have access to the default constructor. Java no longer does that default constructor for me, so I need to create my own default constructor. And a default constructor is generally considered a constructor with no parameters. no parameters. So we can create our new constructor open and close our parentheses to indicate no parameters and we go ahead and write the constructor. Now this is overloading like we've already done with some of our methods. It has the same beginning of the signature, but the parameter list is different. So Java, when it is creating our book, will look for the parameter list that matches whatever you pass in. Now, we could do these set year, set author, set pages, or we can use a new keyword called the this. It's this complicated one, this keyword. So the keyword this, T-H-I-S, refers to the current object that you are referencing. So this refers to the current object that you are referencing. Let me go ahead and write that note here. This keyword refers to the current object reference. So it can actually be used in multiple ways. In this case, we're using the this keyword to reference its own constructor. So instead of writing a uh, public book and writing all that other stuff in there, I can call the other parameter list. So I can call this parameter list that I have up here in the list inside of these parentheses. So I can pass an integer here, and I could say that the integer for the number of the year to begin is a default year of, uh, let's go ahead and say, I don't know, a default year of zero is my initial integer. And my default value for the author is simply an empty string. And my default value for the number of strings, or the number of pages, is also zero. So that this keyword will then call this, calls this constructor up here, because the parameter list matches the constructor up here. And I can actually have a chain of these. So maybe I have a uh, parameter list with just two, and a parameter list with uh, five. And I can keep calling the this inside of successive constructors to build and layer in all of the information, making sure that I have everything that I need without having to repeat myself by calling my setters uh, and getters. Well, I wouldn't call getters inside of a constructor unless I needed it, but I wouldn't have to call all of my setters over and over again. All I have to do is write this. Uh, a really easy way to build and manipulate and overload constructors within multiple calls and having defaults and large parameter list constructors. Okay, so that is our deep dive into constructors. Now get into the coding activity. I'll see you guys in the next one.